the debt ceiling, in its simplest form, represents the total amount of money that the United States government is authorized to borrow to meet its existing legal obligations. These obligations include things like Social Security and Medicare benefits, military salaries, interest on the national debt, tax refunds, and other payments. The ceiling doesn't create new spending but allows the government to finance existing legal obligations that Congresses and Presidents of both parties have made in the past. From a first principle perspective, think of the debt ceiling as the credit limit on a credit card. Just as a credit limit is the maximum amount you can borrow, the debt ceiling is the maximum the government can borrow. When you reach your credit limit, you can't spend more until you pay down your debt or your credit limit is increased. Similarly, hitting the debt ceiling means the government can't incur additional debt until the ceiling is raised or the debt is reduced. When the debt ceiling is reached, the Treasury Department employs extraordinary measures. These are essentially financial maneuvers that temporarily free up money within the existing budget to ensure that the government can keep paying its bills without borrowing more. These can include suspending the reinvestment of federal employees' retirement fund contributions or halting the issuance of certain types of government securities. From a first principle standpoint, these measures are akin to temporarily adjusting your personal budget to avoid overspending when you're close to your credit limit. They are not long-term solutions, but rather stopgaps to prevent immediate consequences like default. A political impasse occurs when different factions cannot agree on a course of action, leading to a stalemate. In the context of the debt ceiling, this often arises from different fiscal philosophies. Historically, debates over the debt ceiling have been used by opposing parties to push for broader fiscal policy changes, such as spending cuts or tax reforms. This tug of war is not new. It dates back to debates over federal spending and taxation principles in early American history. If the debt ceiling is not raised, the government risks a shutdown. This means that non-essential federal services halt, affecting everything from national parks to scientific research. Essential services like social security payments might continue, but there could be delays. For everyday Americans, this translates into potential job furloughs for federal employees, delayed government services, failure to raise the debt ceiling could undermine confidence in the U.S. financial system. First, it signals political instability, which can spook investors. Then, there's the risk of the U.S. defaulting on its obligations, which could lead to higher interest rates as investors demand more return for greater risk. This increase in interest rates can ripple through the economy, affecting everything from mortgages to business loans, potentially leading to a recession. The U.S. economy's size and the dollar's role as a global reserve currency mean that a debt crisis in the U.S. can have worldwide implications. If confidence in the U.S. economy wavers, it can lead to a pullback in global investment. Countries that hold large amounts of U.S. debt, like China and Japan, might be particularly affected. This can disrupt global trade and investment patterns, leading to financial instability in other countries. In the end, the debt ceiling is more than a fiscal cap. It's a mirror reflecting the nation's political, economic, and ethical priorities. Understanding its nuances requires peering through the lens of history, economics, and political philosophy, revealing a tapestry of interconnected decisions and consequences that resonate beyond borders.